going to be a, an introduction video to every single piece of, uh, well, at least every single major piece of, uh, of, of fly tying tools. So I'm going to demonstrate exactly what you, what you need to have to get started and exactly how you're going to use all those different tools. First of all, of course, here is your vise and I have here attached a, a hook. This is a fairly large hook. This is a size 4.0, but this is just for, for illustrating how, how you get started. Well, first of all, of course, you need your bobbin, um, and uh, and uh, preferably a bobbin with a full ceramic tube, because if you have a full ceramic tube, you have a bobbin that lasts a very, very long time. Then you're going to mount your thread, and basically what you do is you just add the thread down here, simply to, to between the, the bobbin's legs, and now what you need to do is you have two options. You need to, to thread the bobbin, so you need the thread to go inside this tube that is part of the bobbin, and... Uh, and you have two options. The first option is um, to simply just put the thread in there, and once it just it's it's just inside the, the bobbin, you simply just suck, and uh, then the thread will will be pulled through the tube. The other uh, and more easy way to do this is to simply take a tool spe specially uh, designed for this. This is a threader, and what you do is it's it's it's, it's a mess of small uh, wire loop, and you put the wire loop through the bobbin, like so, and then you can just take the thread, put the thread into the wire loop, and pull it through, and then you have uh, you have loaded your bobbin. So, with a fully loaded bobbin, now we start, and how we start out tying a fly is basically we just take the thread, put it on the hook, and then, and then simply just turn it behind itself, turn it on top of itself, like that. And uh, when you have done that four or five times, what you will find is that the thread now is um, is secured, and you can you can uh, you can let your bobbin just hang and dangle, because the the weight of the bobbin will actually keep the thread in line. So now what we need to do is we need to make a solid base of thread all the, all the way down the hook shank, because this will uh, will will give all the rest of the material something firm to to latch onto. So and the easiest way to do that is simply to hold uh, have have enough thread here. Uh, to to hold it out in an angle and then simply just tie on top of the the other thread because what happens when you tie here is you can tie all the way up here and simply just by pulling this back you will get a very very even evenly distribute uh, amount of thread all the way down here and a nice and firm and easily and uh, and even uh, part of body uh, 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 layer of, of tying thread to simply, oh, oh, <laughs> unless you of course hit the hook. And as you can see here, I have a very, uh, very smooth, very, very, uh, very good surface here. And simply because I was tying, uh, I was using this end here to actually get the thread to 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 s down and uh, and be completely and correctly in front of the next one. Then I'm going to take my scissors, another very very necessarily <laughs> and and usable tool. Uh, take the scissor and uh, place it here. So good. Uh, so far, so good. What we need to do now is is now I'm going to show you how to use this. This is a dubbing reel, and uh, and how, how that works is uh, basically. Uh, I'm just, just going to zoom a bit out. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a loop. So I'm pulling out a lot more thread as you can see, and then I'm doubling the thread with my finger. And I'm going to do exactly what I did before. Simply put the thread up here, and just tie behind it. This way I get a very very nice loop here, as you can see. A very nice loop here, and th this loop is going to be used to make a dubbing loop body. So just going to take my thread, turn it a bit further up again, and as you can see now I have thread here which makes, uh, which makes um, uh, the rest of the material really really have something to, to stick on. So I have this loop, this double uh, piece of, of tank thread, I'm going to hang that over to the side, and then I'm going to take some dubbing, some pink dubbing here. What I'm going to do with, with this dubbing is I'm going to distribute it so it, it kind of gets elongated and it looks kind of like, as you can see, uh, something that is, is about the approximately the same length as a finger or something like that. The amount of, of dubbing and the length of this you need is, is, is of course, uh, dependent on the hook size and stuff like that. But this will do for, for this demonstration. So I just put this in here. I put it inside. 
put it inside the the dubbing loop. And uh, how, how I do that is is I use my um, my pointing finger to actually keep the loop open. I don't know if it's if it's clear. And then I use my longest finger, you know, this finger right here, that one. I use that one to actually open open the dubbing loop and close the dubbing loop. So this finger right here, I use that. <laughs> I use that to open and close the dubbing loop. I'm sorry about that. I just couldn't resist it. I mean no harm. I mean no offense. It's uh, it was just you know one of those moments. So, uh, um, <laughs> oh, I hope you don't get offended. Oh, so uh, I simply do this and then I open the dubbing loop. I add the dubbing here, like so. And then using my longest finger, again. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that to uh, to 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 uh, to close the dubbing loop. Then I take my brass dubbing reel, and what I do with this is I put it inside the loop, just down in the bottom here, like so. And then it dangles there. And then I'm gonna spin it. I'm gonna set it in motion. I'm gonna spin it simply by. simply by turning it and uh, and this will spin and this will make the thread uh, uh, this will make the dubbing interlaced intertwined in between the two strands of thread giving me a very very nice uh, very very nice uh, dubbing brush so I can make uh, a body easily and also this makes up some very strong flies because uh, all your body materials is is trapped in between the, the thread so this is great, great bodies for for salmon flies and for shrimps and sea trout flies and nymphs and stuff like that. This is a, this is a technique that is very usable for almost any type of fly. So, and as you can see, it's it's fairly easy to 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 turn this and to make a to make a body like that. And like every other material, once it's done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this forward, then I'm gonna safely secure it with my tying thread like this and once I'm sure it's secured I'm gonna pull clamp down on it really really stamp on it so it's it's there and then I'm gonna cut the rest off and there I'm simply gonna cut the lift over part of the dubbing loop I, of course if if this was a real fly I probably would <laughs> I would have used a smaller hook or a different type of, of dubbing but I would have made the, the body all the way up there but this is just purely for demonstration purposes the next, the next item that is often used, uh, uh, a, a very usable uh, flat tying tool, is this. This is the dubbing brush. What this actually does is uh, all the dubbing that is not completely uh, free and is is not pointing the right way. What I can do with this, this is a metal rod with some some spiky metal thingies on there. Is actually just to pull all the dubbing out that I need and basically force any material, if there was a hackle here as well, I could force that as well in the direction that I wanted to, like so. And this, then, then this goes back into its, its holder. The uh, the next thing is uh, I'm going to show you how to use a hackle plier, because uh, um, on this fly, well, this is not a fly. This is just a demonstration. What we need is 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 we want to hackle. A hackle is an essential part of of fly tying. And uh, and as you can see, I've just pulled out a pink feather. Uh, what you normally would do with with a feather of this uh, size is simply to strip off all the all the the, the stuff down here because you don't need that. Um, but since this is a demonstration video, in order for me to really show you how, I'm going to cut this feather off around here so it's not as long. As you can see now, I have a, have a shorter feather, and uh, and uh, what I do mostly is is I tie down uh, all the feathers in in the tip because that 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 gives a lot of, of, of space and room and, and also gives gives a very nice way of of, of uh, tapering the hackle. So what I do with my hackle is I gently, without tearing any fibers off, I pull it backwards, all the way up to where I want it, like so. And as you can see, there I have a very very small piece where some of the the the, the fibers are some of the the fibers are uh, straightforward and the others are folded and hold, held back by me. Um, and this I can I'm just gonna 
Can I make you come a little closer, I think? So, as you can see here, I have this point here, and then I'm going to tie down. So I'm going to lay that on top of the hook, make a, uh, a turn that is not uh, very fast, and then I'm going to clamp down on it, like that, to ensure that it stays there. What you want to do is, is you want to make sure that the uh, the part of the, the hackle is, is pointing towards you, yourself, is, is the part that is uh, the, the brightest colored part of, of the hackle. So, here I have my hackle now, it's tied down in the, in the tip, and uh, and of course I could use my fingers to turn this, but it would it would uh, it would not be as easy as to just take this hackle plier. And hackle plier is just basically a set of a set of jaws and something uh, that turns easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and attach it onto there, and then I'm gonna turn my hackle just gently. Fold, I'm gonna fold every single one back here each time I each time I turn this and then I'm gonna just gonna turn and as you can see it's very easy when you have the hackle plier it's very easy to turn a hackle I could easily have done this you know like up towards the shank like something like this like a like a, a body hackle but uh, but uh, for this fly or this demonstration this will suffice so just gonna turn it down here like this and once I think my hackle is, is is exactly how I want it to be what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply gonna simply hold it a bit forward and then I'm gonna take my thread and fasten it like so I'm gonna cut off the lift over without cutting off any of the the hackle fibers I've tied down Maybe hold it a fold it a bit backwards. Start creating a head part of the fly like this. There I have the hackle. Now there's only one thing left to do, one tool left to demonstrate, and uh, and this tool is is also one of the the most tricky ones to use. This is uh, the uh, whip finish. What how the whip, whip finish works is this has two hooks. A fairly small crooked one and then a bigger more open one I take the small one and and catch the thread and then I catch the thread with the big one then I take and turn it around so I get a triangle and this triangle I'm gonna put there and then I turn it so the triangle turns around the hook but the thread keeps to the underside all the time the, the thread that comes out of the bigger hook keeps on the underside of the hook all the time all the time on the underside like so and then I can just pull the small out and then the big one and I have a lot of nuts if you don't want to do that and that is too complicated for you what you basically can do is you can simply just cut off cut off the thread take two fingers place them on here take the thread up there catch the thread with the two fingers, attach a finger there, and simply just, oh, and there I cut some heckle fibers, and that's one. If you want to do something that's even more easy, you simply take a pen, something like this, and you just, you just make a, a kind of a, a round trip around the pen, put it up to the eye, and clamp down, then you have a nut. Then you have a nut. And yet one more. So basically, that was a demonstration of all the different. Oh, I didn't mention the dubbing needle, but this can be used also to pull out some dubbing and stuff like that. But basically, that is how all the different uh, the different types of tools for fly tying uh, works and is used. Thank you for tuning in.